The NVIDIA 60 class, this was a GPU segment that many buyers who were just getting into the PC gaming hobby but didn't have a lot of disposable income gravitated towards, and considering the further down the stack you go, the larger the audience becomes, you'll find these cards historically to be very popular. They were very affordable but also offered some very good performance that was on par with the high-end GPU from the previous generation. You guys remember the GTX 1060, a card that had an MSRP of $299, and when it came out, it was offering 6 gigabytes of VRAM in 2016. And that was 2 gigabytes more than the outgoing high-end RTX or GTX 980, which the 1060 matched in performance, by the way. So a couple of years later, mainstream buyers could get a GPU that offered previous high-end performance without really breaking the bank. A card that could allow gamers to enjoy 1080p gaming with high-fidelity visuals. It was suitable for the VRAM requirements back then as well. But unfortunately, we have to focus on the here and now, and as fun as it could be to take a trip down memory lane, that won't help you navigate through the current market, which, let's be real, is a total mess. We're going to break down why this 60-class GPU launch in 2025 has left so many people underwhelmed, touching on performance, the... Uh, or the lack of thereof, NVIDIA's pricing shenanigans, the 8GB versus 16GB models, and how the once value king 60 class card has seemingly lost its crown. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It's been a while since my last upload on the channel and that's because I was actually in Japan for vacation. I had an absolutely incredible time there and I saw so much cool stuff and I do have some content in the works where I'll be talking about my time and experiences there as well as talking about the PC hardware scene there as well. But today's video, it's going to be about what's going on in the GPU market and how the community is feeling now that we've gotten NVIDIA's latest RTX 5060 Ti hitting the market and with benchmark data published from independent reviewers. When a new generation GPU launches, you know, you'd expect it to soundly beat uh, the cards from the previous generation, especially ones that are, you know, four or five years older. In the case of the RTX 5060 Ti, you'll find that it seems to sit in between the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3070 give or take, depending on, you know, where you watched or saw your review from. I didn't bother looking at too many reviews, and honestly, I was just so disinterested in the card because I knew how lackluster it was actually going to turn out. With that said, performance isn't particularly atrocious. Like, for 1080p and even 1440p high gaming, you could definitely play many modern games with no issues. Where the issue lies is that a 60-class card being released in 2025 at best trades blows with the RTX 3080, a high-end GPU that's nearly a half a decade old, and in most tests, the 3080 is still beating the 5060 Ti. Yikes. Sure, generationally, the 5060 Ti is, you know, about 20% faster than the 4060 16GB, or the 4060 Ti 16GB. Man, these names are atrocious. And um, that's the data coming from Tech Power Up at 1080p and 1440p, and also taking a look at reviews from like Gamers Nexus. That's something, but you know, it's a far cry from the kind of leap that uh, we're used to seeing. For context, NVIDIA itself touted a 20% increase gen on gen, which some outlets called a fair assessment. In real gaming benchmarks, that actually played out to be about 20-25% to better than the 4060 Ti in many titles. So finally beating the RTX 3060 Ti by a similar margin, and it took two generations for a card to come out and decisively beat a 3060 Ti, a card from 2020. Now, to be fair, in a vacuum, the 5060 Ti 16GB is an okay performer for 1080p and 1440p gaming. NVIDIA markets it as a 1080p max setting card, and, you know, 1440p in many games using DLSS. And indeed, at those resolutions, it can generally hit high frame rates. It even shows strong efficiency. In one of Eurogamer's tests, it delivered about 95% of the 4070's performance, while also, you know, offering about or drawing about 81% of the power. So efficiency has improved quite dramatically thanks to the Blackwell architecture. That's great and all, but, you know, gamers are more focused on raw performance. And here, the 5060 Ti just doesn't really impress. Uh, at least for its class. As highlighted earlier, sitting in between a 3070 and a 3080, so it's not enough to really move the needle. 
And remember, the 3080 launched at $699 MSRP back in 2020. And, you know, at the beginning, you could find it. And then crypto mining boom came along and that ruined everything. But the RTX 5060 Ti was supposed to be a more affordable mid-tier card, yet it fails to consistently beat the older $700 card from 2020. As one commenter on Reddit puts it as, it's crazy that a $429 5060 Ti is still nowhere near beating a $700.3080 from 2020, when your brand new next generation GPU can barely match a last generation card or sometimes loses to it, uh, that's a big red flag and that this launch is underwhelming. Even going back to the RTX 20 series in, tw in late 2018 and early 2019, a series which you know also wasn't received that well, but you could still see the RTX 2060 matching the 1080, an 80 class from the prior generation, just like how the 1060 managed to match the previous generation 80 class. But today, you have to step up to the $750 plus RTX 5070 Ti, and you know, you know, that's over double the cost in order to get that last generation 80 class performance. It's just atrocious. Now, since we're talking about pricing, this is where a lot of the frustration actually comes from. NVIDIA technically announced two variants, right? So there's the RTX 5060 8 gigabyte, and then there's the 16 gigabyte model. On paper, their suggested prices were $380 and $430 respectively. Um, not exactly cheap, but when you consider the pricing on the 4060 series, it is a bit of an improvement. Um, and it, it could be worse, right? Here's the catch. At $430, that is largely fantasy. In reality, when reviews went live, most of the RTX 5060 60Ti 16GB models were listed at around $500 plus, in some cases even uh, at $550 plus. Many AIB partners came up with the extra markups, you know, factory overclocks, fancy coolers, RGB, all of that good jazz. You know, Tech Power Up actually noticed that the MSI 5060Ti Gaming X that they were tested had an MSRP of $450 US, which is, you know, quite a bit of a markup considering the baseline is at $430. Um, so even the cheaper models uh, or the quote unquote cheaper models, they were often on shelves for about $480, $500. And like I said, sometimes above that too. Um, and there's no NVIDIA reference card this time around. So there's really nothing to anchor down the pricing of the cheaper cards from the AIBs. Um, so yeah, like we like we've already said, MSRP is largely bullshit, and that's just a shame. And not that it really matters, but the 8GB model, which is priced at, you know, $380, has been pretty much invisible. NVIDIA very pointedly did not sample the 8GB version to reviewers, and, you know, virtually all the review units were 16GB cards. And, you know, why would that be? Well, probably because NVIDIA knows that an 8 gigabyte card in 2025 at that price point is going to be a very, very hard sell. Recent games are already struggling on GPUs with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. In fact, in some cases, they're just straight up playable. During my recent revisit of the RTX 2080 and when I was working on my review of the 5070 Ti, a game like Indiana Jones and the Great Circle refused to launch uh, on the 2080, which has 8 gigabytes of VRAM until I went into the game using safe mode and uh, set the quality settings to low or medium, and then it could finally run. NVIDIA is obviously avoiding any of the spotlight on the 8GB 5060 Ti, and that speaks volumes. NVIDIA didn't want headlines about the card hitting the VRAM limitations in new games on day one, because they know that selling an 8GB graphics card for nearly $400 in 2025 for, you know, that price, is it's just DOA. An 8GB GPU in 2025 at most should be like $200 and would probably best serve as an eSports card. As a reminder, the RX 470 launched for like $180 in 2016 and that came with 8GB of VRAM, so it just goes to show you how far we've slipped. Just think of some recent examples, uh, you know, stuff like Last of Us Part 1, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Star Wars uh, Outlaws, all these games and more can really chew through that 8GB of VRAM at higher ultra settings, even at 1080p. Gamers with cards like the RTX 3070 8GB or the 4060 Ti 8GB have already run into texture streaming issues, stuttery messes, or you know they've had to really compromise on the settings to get a playable experience. And that trend is only going to grow. Imagine buying a $400 GPU in 2025 
and you have to turn down settings to like low or medium. Reviewers have collectively called out Nvidia's antics and said that it doesn't make sense for them to be releasing an 8GB 5060 Ti unless it's simply there to serve as an upsell tactic. Along with that, Nvidia is not sampling them the 8GB model and also telling partners not to do the same and that speaks volumes. Even retailers from what I saw didn't get any stock of the 8GB card, in, sa in fact some of them didn't even know it existed. To sum up the pricing mess, Nvidia's MSRP of $430 for the 16GB model sounded somewhat reasonable at first, right? But actual street prices often push it to that $500 to $550 territory, and at that point it enroaches on the next up tier, which is the RTX 5070. In other words, if you can get this card near MSRP, it might be okay, um, but when you look at the previous generation 60 class GPUs offering way better bang for your dollar, I'm not even sure about that. But paying over $500 makes no sense at all, and the 8GB version, almost at $400, is just laughable. It's very, very poor value uh, when 8GB is pretty much increasingly at a limitation at this point. Perhaps the biggest disappointment underlying all of this is how far the 60 class GPUs have fallen in terms of value. Traditionally, the Nvidia 60 class GPUs was the sweet spot for gamers, often delivering high-end tier performance from the previous generation at mid-range prices. We've already talked about the 1060 and the 2060, and I even had the chance to take a look at the 3060 Ti when that was launching back in 2020, and in my review, I found that it was on par, if not better, than my 2080 Super, even though the price back then had jumped, uh, but at least it was still carrying that tradition of matching the 80 class, so it made that level of performance just far more accessible. This all changed with the 40 series though. With the 4060 Ti, it was nowhere close to the RTX 3080, and in some cases it would even lose to the RTX 3060 Ti, which was the outgoing model at that time. Only now do we have a 60 class GPU that is able to come close to the 3080, but even then it doesn't do that reliably. In other words, instead of leaping a whole tier up like the 60 class used to do, the 5060 is only catching up to what should have been last generation's mid-tier card. It's stagnation that we have seen from them last generation and Nvidia's foot is still on that pedal. Another way to illustrate the decline is to look at how much of the flagship GPU silicon the 60 class is actually getting. Spec cutdowns are getting so much more severe. The GTX 1060 had 1280 CUDA cores, which you know was 36% of the 3584 CUDA cores of the GTX 1080 Ti, the flagship from that generation. Then the RTX 4060 Ti had 4,352 CUDA cores, 27% of the 16,384 found in the flagship RTX 4090. Then with the RTX 5060 Ti, which has 4,608 CUDA cores, you compare that to the RTX 5090, and that has 21,760, that is just 21% of cores. You see what is happening here? With each new generation, you're getting less and less GPU. These aren't even true 60 class GPUs at this point, they're 50 class GPUs, and the real 60 class is the 5070 and 5070 Ti. It's just that Nvidia has shifted the naming upwards so the masses don't really notice. This is why people are getting pissed off in the PC hardware space, Prices are rising, meanwhile you're getting less and less hardware for your money. It's literally shrinkflation. It's no wonder people are saying that Nvidia's 60 class has truly lost its way. One frustrated Reddit commenter that went viral lamented how I remember buying a $300 GTX 1060 on release and it was on par with a 980 from the previous generation. Now, by comparison, a $430 RTX 5060 Ti can't even beat a regular RTX 3080. The value equation just is not the same anymore. Nvidia's mid-range has really really crept up in price and yet the performance gains have slowed down, relatively speaking. The result is a lot of unhappy enthusiasts who feel like, you know, the value leader has become a mediocre compromise. The reaction from the gaming community for the 5060 Ti launch has been pretty swift and brutal. Once the review embargo lifted and the numbers were out, Reddit and Twitter were flooded with memes and complaints. And, you know, we already mentioned a few choice quotes from some of the sites, but the general tone is worth emphasizing. Disappointment, frustration, and sarcasm is plenty. 
Gamers Nexus titled their review, more marketing BS, openly mocking NVIDIA's extravagant claims that the 5060 Ti could be like 50 times faster than a 1060 with frame generation. Steve from GN had a field day with that one. And it has to be highlighted just how much of an emphasis NVIDIA is putting on AI. Instead of selling hardware like they used to, they're leveraging AI to give you this illusion from software advancements that you're still getting a massive leap in performance. But the actuality is that, you know, AI frame generation is not going to solve the limitation of stuff like VRAM problems. And if you've tested this for yourself, you know what I mean. I'm not completely discrediting frame generation or upscaling uh, for that matter. And, you know, I've used them before. They definitely have their own time and place. But using it as a main driving force to sell the hardware is really not going to entice people positively. We're starting to see that firsthand. Unlike the other graphics cards in the series, this one has received fairly low attention. The trailer on NVIDIA's own GeForce channel has received only about 40k views at the time of making this video. And looking at retailers in North America and other parts of the world, the cards actually didn't sell out. And that's saying something considering even with the inflated MSRP of say a 5080, that card was still pretty hard to find within the first month of its launch. However, the RTX 5060 Ti didn't sell out day one. And from what I hear, stock levels of the 16 gigabyte model weren't actually that high to begin with. So considering that, it goes to show you that people are rejecting this card. And I don't think anyone was selling the 8GB model to begin with. And I'm hoping that, you know, once they hit store shelves, they sit there, every single one of them, and they start collecting dust. On many forums and social media, you'll see comments like, I'll just stick with my card for another year or two, or perhaps I'll look at AMD for this round. Another alternative would be the used market, since the new market just isn't going to be offering consumers with good value products. Um, then going secondhand might be your next best option. Now this will be highly region dependent and because new G the new GPU market has been so terrible, this has actually caused prices to become inflated on the used side as well. In my area, people are selling 3080 Ti's for like $800 to $1,000 Canadian. So then, you know, that defeats the whole purpose and it forces people to go back to the new options. So if you decide to go with used, be prepared to actually allocate your time towards hunting for a deal that's actually worth it. All of this brings us to the bigger question. Where is Nvidia going with its 60 class GPUs now? The 5060 Ti's 16GB Rocky reception seems to really underscore a growing divide between Nvidia's strategy and the gamer expectations. For years, the 60 class was the mainstay for the PC gamers, a card that you could recommend to a friend building a decent rig without really breaking the bank. Now it just feels like Nvidia is pushing those buyers to either spend more, so you know, get upsold to the 5070 Ti at $750 plus, or settle for a much more modest upgrade than they did in the past. It's a trend that has many gamers uneasy, and you know, if this trajectory continues, we're worried for the future generations. Say the 6060 or the 6060 Ti could further erode that price to performance value that once defined the mid-tier GPUs like the 60 class. As one commenter sarcastically predicted, only the 60 Ti can actually beat a 4070 reliably, and you know, that'll probably be two to three years down the road. It's a joke, but you know, the cynicism is out there. Nvidia's focus seems to be, you know, drifting more towards AI features, more upselling to expensive models, less raw performance jumps for the mainstream audience. So the backlash from the community sends a very, very clear message. Gamers want better value from the 60 series, not just incremental updates at ever increasing prices. Nvidia might be banking on its own dominant position and the allure of its software ecosystem, you know, stuff like DLSS, you know, CUDA, all of that stuff. But, you know, the question is, will people actually sit out this time and hopefully force a course of correction? Or are we going to see the 5060 Ti and the upcoming 5060 climb up the Steam charts like we did it with the 4060 series because, well, they have no other alternatives and you can't even buy some of the older, better value cards anymore. But we're going to have to wait and see. That's going to be doing it for this uh, analysis or rant. Hopefully you guys got something out of it and enjoyed it. Stay safe out there and I'll be catching you guys in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.